Hi, I've just got a little video for you and I'm doing something interesting. So I've built this extension with this flat roof which has got a really wide fascia detail. This is actually an orangery, we've got some big glass lanterns going on the roof. And quite often, with the build up of the structure, with the parapet to get all the water and insulation and the falls, you end up with a wide fascia. So what we tend to do is like a Victorian detail, is we start by layering up the fascia and ending up with a cove at the very top. It's absolutely beautiful. So the material that you can see here is MDF. Now, straight away you're thinking, MDF outside, that's fatal. But this material is called Tricolor Extreme and it is indestructible. They say you could submerge it in water for 25 years and it will still have its dimensional section size, which is pretty good. So painted, it's good for 50 years, which is really the equivalent of most timbers, including hardwoods and softwood, if they're not maintained. But you maintain that and it will give you a lifetime of service. So the material itself, it looks exactly the same. It molds really nicely. It's no more dense. And I've actually uh, made plant boxes with this before, filled them with soil and watered that like crazy. And they are still perfect. They've been there outside my house where I'm living for about seven years. Now, cutting this stuff is no different from any other way of cutting it and joining it. So we've got a little bit of a technique we've got going on here. We've got it molded in one piece, the, so this little cock bead at the bottom. And then we're using a biscuit joint here, which is routed in. And then we're mitering the internal and the external corners here. Normally we'd put a scribe, but there's no way you want to scribe all of that around there, so a mitre will do. We're using a really good PU uh, glue, exterior glue. And I'm going to show you how I cut these mitres, and they're all perfect. So if I just show you an open mitre here. So I'll just get my mate to come round and try to put this on shot. So there's a typical mitre there. So you can see this is a glue lamb beam, the whole frame's glue lamb. We've got this OSB parapet here, which runs up and contains all of the roof. And now we're running around with the first layer, which is mitered. And anyone who does a lot of work with timber, you know, trying to mitre, this is particularly difficult. There's so many ways of doing it. First of all, all my chop saws won't get that. That's about 400. They won't get that. So I'm using a battery circular saw and a very simple jig which I'll show you. I'm going to put a cut on, I'm going to show you how easy it is. It's very, very simple. There's nothing to it. So follow me. We'll just go inside where we're set up. So what we have here is we have all our materials. So I've got the next layer of material which goes over the top of this, which is, it looks a little bit like an upside down skirting. That one then covers the screw line on that board, which gives it the next projection. And the very top piece is this cove section, which is softwood, which clips underneath the trim on the roof and it just finishes it off. It just looks amazing. So that's the last bit that will go around. But prior to that, I've got this jig here. So on the trestles, or in our case ladder, we've got a length of our material. This is the next piece of fascia, and we're gonna put a mitre on it. On top of that, I've got a section of material with two battens fixed to it, and they sit exactly over this material, absolutely perfectly. Now there's a measurement, of course, from the side of the base on the circular saw to the blade. Once you've established that by doing one cut, then you add that distance every time to do your cut. So I'm gonna do your cut. I'm, you see I'm cutting into a bit of sacrificial board, obviously, because I want the work supported. In this, our measurement is 122 millimeters to the cut. This is the end of a board. I can afford to go a little bit more. I'll just take it a little bit more to show you how it's gonna go. Right, I'm not gonna put a mask on because I'm talking, I'm in fresh air, but normally I've got my mask on and my, obviously my eyewear and my headphones. So here goes. I'll 
I'm going to put the saw on silent mode. Yes, it's got a silent mode, just so it's not too powerful. So I can press this button here, and it says silent, which is quite nifty. And it does quieten it down a little bit. It probably takes it from around about 90 decibels, or 95 decibels, to around about 70, which is like a loud talk as opposed to a shout. So here we go. On there we go. There we have it, you've got a really, really straight flat mitre. Now, those carpenters out there watching this would be thinking, I'll be using my rail saw for that, and yes, I've got different rail saws. However, if you use a rail saw at 45 degrees, some of the rail saws, as you may have seen in the Skill Builder Rail Saw Roundup, have actually got a small device or a tab which clips into the rail. I know the Makita does that and it stops it from tipping out. But my Festool one is prone to slipping out. So it's, it, when you've got it on there, the weight, it wants to pull out of the rail and sometimes that gives you a bit of vibration and a nasty cut. So this is a much, much better way of doing that for me because I've got this beautiful base plate. I keep my weight on that, away from the blade obviously. Gently go through and I've got a perfectly true cut. This is the end of a sheet, the corner of a sheet, dead parallel. All this material I've had machined up, it's perfect in dimension, so every piece I pick up I know I'm not going to mess around with it. And then um, the final piece for this board will be biscuiting the other end. So I use a router instead of a biscuit jointer. And it's basically, I'll put a continuous groove in for three biscuits. The PU glue will completely fill, them, fill, fill that up. And all I do is I line the back of the router with the bottom and the top of the router with the top. And that gives me just the right amount of groove. I can squeeze about three or four biscuits in there. I prefer a biscuit joint to anything. It, it stops me having to cleat it behind and put face fixings through there, like the screws which need to hold it back. And so we'll just do that as well now. And that's it. And that board's ready to go. So we're going to get on now, fix the rest of this, and I'll see you soon.